Hey guys, welcome. In today's episode, I will be sharing some tips on how I've changed my template or format in using my Hobonichi wigs to make it aesthetically pleasing for me without sacrificing its functionality. This is a flip through video of my planners for June and July. I decided to skip April and May because I found that I had no major changes or breakthroughs in terms of systems or design in my planner during those months. But during June, I think I've made one of the best changes in using the Hobonichi Weeks Mega because I think I've shared in my previous videos how it was a challenge using this planner because I don't know how to design or organize my entries in my Wix pages that are functional and aesthetically pleasing. I mean, aesthetically pleasing or appealing for me. That's why um, most of my entries. from January to May kept on changing for me they were disorganized to look at which is why it was difficult for me to find things because I kept on changing the format come June I decided to switch the function of my weeks pages and my notes pages. Instead of using my weeks pages for my to do's and trackers, I use them now to log how the day went, what made the day distinct, in short, it's where I write narratives or paragraphs which I previously log in my notes pages. This transition made my weeks pages um, more organized and appealing, at least for me, to look at. That's why I sort of get that fulfillment vibe whenever I look back at these pages is very different from what I feel looking back at my January to May pages. This sort of feeling is what I strive for whenever I create or design my pages. So unless I get that it unless I get that it means I'm not yet at the right place of some sort. I hope you get what I'm saying guys. Since most writings in these pages are expected to be much longer since these are narratives, I did sort of shrink my writings so that two lines fit in the 3.7 mm grids. This was something I actually hated before. I never thought it would come to this that I like writing in this very tiny fonts. Um, this was a surprising change for me. I guess I've underestimated my capacity to adapt and be flexible. So these are my spreads starting june i mean this one would you agree that they look uh, very neat and organized and relaxing to look at comparing to my pr previous spread the things or the thing that yeah the things that are not standard in using these pages is that there is no specific topic that I write 
about in these pages. I could write about work, um, personal stuff, something I watched or listened to, like this one. These are the podcasts that I listened on a certain day. And then where I'm at, where I went. I also log some movies that I watched in Netflix or documentaries and then things that I sort of learned in that um, documentaries and contents and also just any thoughts that I deem important to write for a certain day I also put some titles or highlight something to prompt me that that certain topic needs or is worth giving time to think about or researching in the future something like that so for example this was title of the movie that my father recommended to watch in netflix i actually started watching it but i haven't finished it yet yeah i have those days that i don't finish watching something and even though this became sort of my commonplace uh, journal these spreads uh these weeks pages i still practice writing my worries which is in a light brown colored ink this one this this is supposed to look like this this one's um and then I get back to it once they get resolved, which is what I call my anti-catastrophizing technique, which I shared in my previous videos. Maybe I could share all my mental health techniques or tools that I incorporate in my planners on a different and focused video so that I can dig deeper about the topic and share it with you guys. Would you love that? then going to my notes pages i've transformed it into my vertical weekly spread where i log my trackers and to-do lists so what i did was rotated the planner so that I have a larger horizontal space to accommodate the seven days of the week. Then I write my templates, which is days of the week. Um, after this, this one is my food tracker. Food tracker, my chores, schedules, my outfit tracker. So, I use the same quantity of page as my weekly since one week uh, one week fits into one page. I also include let's cover that. I also include my mental health tracker for a certain month in my notes pages. This is something I consider to be one of the most important sections in my planner because this is very holistic. It shows me my emotions on a certain day. And it's contributors. The controllable, controllable ones are the good habits, um, intermittent fasting, exercise, walking, sunlight, meditation, good sleep, my period tracker and my supplements or meds and then the 
uncontrollables or the triggers are listed in here so these are things that are due to external forces that make you feel something either good or bad so it's all in here and in using this tracker i've identified the root cause of my binge eating for i think using this now for two or three months i kind of identify those things so the first one is the cost of or root cause of my binge eating and therefore i was able to avoid it by treating the ro the root cause not yet consistently but i kind of have the awareness and therefore i know when i'm when i'm triggered therefore i can choose not to respond compared to the time that i don't know why i have these cravings and all i did was to comply with that cravings and suffering the negative effects which is or which are constant tiredness bloating and feeling guilty those things so we're through with my um personal planner or goals planner so let's go with my memory keeping planner um, I still do um, the same templates and I just write about how the day went but I know I haven't really... I've left some pages in my June spreads which I haven't <laughs> had time to write the entries and yeah, look at July I have a lot of empty pages so I also update the calendar since some of my schedules are not pre-planned most of it just comes that's why I can't fill the calendar on the first week of each month so my work planner is also the same I noticed that I sort of stopped using different ballpoint pen in my spread that's why um, it looked flat then after looking back at my previous pages I kind of got reminded again that's why I'm doing it again I think I have kind of rewrite some things in here by using a bolder bolder tip to highlight some things um it it makes my planner more interesting and fun to look at that's why i'm doing it again like this one these are very simple tricks without doing much or needing much um tools but it does have a very great effect very simple and very functional yet very functional so yeah i get i guess that's about that for my june and july flip through i probably i won't be discussing this i will be discussing this in august this is my i call my everything planner so this was a this is a take a note planner 
hybrid planner and this one is the undated calendar i stopped using that this after a month or two months of using this and now i kind of um loving using it again so i'll explain it to you again next time maybe why i needed this planner why i gave why i gave it a second try so actually i've been enjoying using this that's why i'm gonna be sharing this in august because i've started using this this august so thank you for watching my video i hope you've enjoyed and see you again next time thanks for watching